This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Miniature painting tools can be exciting, but overwhelming. With promises to make painting easier, faster, and more fun, it can be tempting to go to your local game store and buy everything that Games Workshop has to offer. However, that would be a mistake because the more money you spend on gear, the less money you'll have to spend on your army, and that could ruin your entire Warhammer experience. Okay, maybe not that big of a mistake. These GW snips cost $50, which just, wow. They do look chic and high quality, but I can't help but think that it's really just a name brand markup. Instead, I'm using these steady 5.5 inch snips on sale for $14. The snips come with a protective cap for the blades. The blades are long and narrow and leave a super fine cut behind with hardly any burr and zero stress marks. And the best part, they cut through the plastic like butter. Overall, these snips just do everything that I want my snips to do for a price I'm willing to pay for them. Hobby knife. I have a hard time understanding what you can do to make a hobby knife be worth $34. It is very chic. It has a weighted and ergonomic grip. All of these things seem like a plus, but a $34 plus? I like to use the Ulfa Craft Knife. The unique shape of the blade makes the blade itself stronger, and it feels much more secure in the handle when I am cutting. The angle of the blade also allows more control, which helps me get into those tiny nooks and crannies for removing mold lines and bits of sprue. Again, these things cut like butter, and they were only $6 at my local hardware store, and they came with several extra blades. Mold Line Remover I'm just confused on this product in general. When I want to remove mold lines, I just use a dulled X-Acto blade. Files Games Workshop's files cost $21 for two files. Army Painter's files cost $12 for three. And I'm sure that you can get these same files for even less expensive at your local hardware store. But really, what I want to talk about beyond the file are these little hobby sander sticks and or sandpaper. You can't just use a file and paint, it's going to leave a texture. Instead, you need to go back over your filed areas with a high grit sanding stick or what I prefer even more, wrapping your high grit sandpaper around your file and then going from there. Before we continue, let's take a minute to talk about Squarespace. Squarespace is the easy to use all in one platform to launch your business or online presence. I'm preparing for a big miniature painting contest next month. To help keep my fans in the loop, I can create a website using Squarespace. Squarespace offers dozens of gorgeous pre-designed templates and their new drag and drop grid system allows me to customize my website however I want. I can show off my work using one of Squarespace's high quality and customizable galleries, upload videos to show my workflow. Of course, I can offer digital merchandise like digital download PDFs or videos as well as customizable products through Squarespace's print-on-demand feature. Whether you're going for your first Slayer Sword or just want to show off to friends and family, Squarespace has everything you need to create the website of your dreams. So when you're ready to make your custom website, head to squarespace.com slash lilamev and use the code lilamev to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. All right, back to painting. Plastic glue. Okay, this plastic glue works just fine, and for $7.75, it's worth the money. However, if you want to have the superior gluing and gap filling experience, then you need to make sprue goo. Sprue goo is a mixture of Tamiya thin cement and extra sprues from your Warhammer armies. What's great about Tamiya thin cement is that it melts the plastic, so then when it rehardens, your two separate pieces harden as a single piece, making the bond extremely strong. Using sprue goo is even better because it helps you fill in the gaps from your connecting pieces. So the ability to fill the gaps as well as melt the plastic makes assembling your models incredibly easy. If you're making sprue goo at home, you'll know you have the correct mixture of sprue to Tamiya thin cement when you pull the brush out and you can see a little dollop of goo left on your brush. Citadel Water Pot. I have no complaints about this product. It's a water cup. It does what it says it's going to do and cleans your brushes. However, my local game store sells these little silicone paint pots that I like much better. 
They can be suctioned to the bottom or side of whatever paint cup you're using at home. And if you want to be really fancy, you can even get their ultimate rinse cup. Model holder. I have talked about this one so many times, but I'm going to repeat it here. You need the hobby holder from Game Envy. This little arm makes a huge difference for stabilizing my hand for better miniature painting. With the use of bottle caps, you can switch around models with ease, and it's a small business ran by great people. As far as the color spray stick, just put your miniatures on cardboard or go grab a few pill bottles, empty paint containers, whatever, and use those instead. No need for whatever that thing is. Liquid green stuff. Never, 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 ever buy this stuff. Liquid green stuff is supposed to be used to fill gaps in your model. However, it crumbles, it shrinks, it's so difficult to use, and I have never actually seen anyone use this product successfully. I recommend using Milliput if you need to sand it, or Sprue Goo if you want to glue and gap fill in one step. Or if you want to be really extra, this UV resin pen, which I talk about in this video here, also works great. Citadel Palette Pad. I am offended by this product's existence. It's just paper. Go make yourself a wet palette, or better yet, try this wet palette from Game Envy or the Redgrass Games wet palette. Citadel Spray Primer. Supposedly, GW Spray Par- Mochi, what are you doing? You haven't been in a video in a while. I know, it's so sad that, the, that you're out of shot. Supposedly, the spray primer and this base layer are supposed to match. However, they rarely do. On top of that, these spray primers are so much more expensive and they come in very limited colors and don't go nearly as far as I would like them to. Before I got an airbrush, I used the Tester Surface Primer. The mist is very fine and doesn't clog up the details on your model. However, if you're looking for colored primer, then try Krylon Color Master Primer. Brushes. Games Workshop has so many brushes, ranging in price from $6 to $32. One would assume that somewhere in here, there would be a good brush. There isn't. Actually, I can't say for sure, maybe there is, but you can do so much better. There are two types of brushes, synthetic and animal hair. I use almost exclusively Kalinsky Sable Hair brushes from Windsor Newton, which are not cheap. However, the detail you can get is incredible, and if you take good care of them, they can last for years and years. But if you want low effort brushes, something that can be used for base coating, terrain, or just getting paint onto your model, then you don't need anything that fancy, and you also don't need anything as fancy as what Games Workshop offers. I've done a lot of research on synthetic brushes, and as far as I can tell, they're all basically the same. The problem with synthetic brushes is that the tip will always curve. So if you're okay with going through brushes and just want to go less expensive and work for as long as you can before you trash it, then really any brand will do. Paints. Citadel paints are not great. They have good coverage, come in a whole rainbow of colors, but they are very thick straight out of the container and require new painters to learn how to thin immediately. Instead, whether you are new or old to the hobby, I highly recommend a Pro Acryl as my go-to standard paints. Wet blending, layering, glazing, or whatever else you need, these paints do basically everything and serve as my standard workhorse paints. Contrast paints. Games Workshop contrast paints are the only product that I would somewhat consider because they are fairly unique. They come in a variety of colors, and of course it can be used to color your model in a single pass, but they can also be used to glaze in colors as well as through the airbrush. However, I like inks better, specifically Scale 75 Intensity Set. They're cheaper, they work just as well as contrast paint, they glaze better, they go through the airbrush better. However, again, they don't have as many colors. So I guess this one is 50-50.
Let me know your thoughts. Do you agree with my opinion on these GW products? Or is there a product or two that you swear by that I dissed? If you like what I do, you know the drill. Like, comment, subscribe. Go join me over on Patreon. Thanks so much. I'll see you next time. What am I supposed to do with you? What am I supposed to do? Huh? What do I do now? He's purring. Can you hear him purring?